everybody, and welcome to a confrontational wild ride with Steve-O. We go ahead and come straight at Adam-22 about the gang stuff, the you-know-what stuff, and all of his people leaving No Jumper. I mean, man, a lot of people jumped ship, and we didn't even bat an eyelash. We just went straight at him about it. And I'll tell you what, he is a solid podcast every time. I happen to really like the guy. He just told us how it is. And let me tell you how it is. I'm on my tour bus. I'm finishing up the Bucket List Tour, the final shows ever, and it's going to end in Gainesville. So if you're in Ohio, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Florida, I mean, dude, get on it at stevo.com for tickets. And if you're ready to see some juicy confrontational action, then let's get into it. I went with the uh, orange for a basketball. Oh, sweet. <laughs> I forgot it. you changed the color. Yeah, yeah sick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Orange for a threesome. <laughs> 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 right. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam 22. We back in here. In the flesh for the second time. I'm hyped to be here. Back First in, time was in the flesh, right? Yeah. Back in the bus. Yeah. In the flesh for the second time, which is... Uh, Rarefied air, man. Really? Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah I mean, because cool. someone has to perform pretty well on our podcast for them to be invited back. Hell yeah. And so many people were on Zoom. Oh, yeah. That of the people who are invited back, not many uh, come back a second time and in the flesh. Well, I'm overjoyed to be here. So Yeah, I mean, and, dude. And your podcasts have been performing well recently. Uh, yeah, we did some good ones recently. Yeah, huh? the ones that you've been on, people want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, a lot of people are asking for interviews, well, you're right, yeah. Check this out. Um, on the No Jumper podcast, which I believe we're simultaneously uploading, Yes. I told you that I've been building out my media department, and um, I've got a guy who's hired strictly just to do podcast shorts. Right. Just little podcast shorts. So one of the first short clips that this guy makes and puts out is he, he, he calls it the truth, all caps, truth, truth in all caps, the truth about Adam 22 and why he something or other, you know, like I didn't, I remember like I, I saw it just kind of come through my feed and I was like, I remember thinking, Ooh, well that seems kind of odd. Like, how do we know what the truth is? You know? <laughs> like, who are we to say what the truth is? Yeah. But from a clickbait perspective, you definitely want to always be f like filling the audience in on some truth that they are not currently aware right, of. Right. And, and, uh, I mean, the guy is definitely a sophisticated dude knows what he's doing, but it was just eerie how just about as soon as I saw that clip, thought ooh, that's kind of weird then i get a text from adam 22 like hey I just saw that clip you done to do the podcast and i'm thinking like oh no adam 22 wants me back on no jumper so he can like call you out <laughs> <laughs> call me out maybe kick my ass <laughs> i don't know and uh and i was like yeah absolutely i'd love to come back on no jumper and i hope that uh there was nothing disrespectful no, no, no. I watched it. I, I, I don't mind. I, I kind of gave the whole world a free pass on whatever they wanted to have as their opinions in terms of this situation. So I, I didn't even watch like a ton of it. I'm pretty sure I watched you guys' clip, but it's not like it's not something where I was like stressing people freaking out over it or whatever. I understand it's kind of a shocking idea, you know? I mean, I, I uh, don't think that we had anything controversial to say about it. I think that my opinion was that whether you consider the whole, you know, Lena with the other guy situation to be an L or a W doesn't even matter in your world because it just, like, made you go crazy and get tons of attention. Yeah, I mean, that is kind of a weird thing you... Uh a, a reality that you get to once you're like deriving a large percentage of your income from OnlyFans is like the only way that you're going to be able to get more money every month from OnlyFans is to get more attention. So right. <laughs> sometimes that can be like you just make really good content, you know, you, you do podcasts or whatever. But like for a lot of these girls, it's just short form content. Nothing moves faster than TikToks and YouTube shorts and Instagram reels but, and whatnot. But don't they have to be careful to not mention that site? Otherwise, they get their 
stuff taken down on TikTok. a lot of times in particular like reels i think you'd be all right youtube shorts they tend to be pretty open-minded but in terms of TikTok, definitely you have to be really careful but like you know for us it's like we when me and her kind of started discussing this idea that was a big part of it it was just like oh people are gonna freak out about this like this will just get a right. ton of attention so then it was kind of weird for people to be talking about it as if like oh adam is so pissed like he's so mad because everybody's talking about this and it's like bro the whole reason why we did it was because we knew it was something that people wouldn't be able to resist talking right. about you know mm -hmm. and, and dude it's such a crazy like double standard world <laughs> we live in like it just doesn't even check out that like what you do with the plug talk podcast like there's all of this like other women like all this all of this crazy stuff going on in your relationship but heaven forbid Mm. Like that your wife should go shoot a scene with another dude. I mean, I totally get why there's a double standard because the truth is, is that I, I mean, people perceive it completely differently and it just really is different in a lot of like significant ways because it's just like you saw it with the way that this dude, Jason Love, who did it, like he kind of like went on a little bit of a media tour afterwards talking about it and said some stuff that we kind of perceived as like disrespectful, you know? And that's kind of crazy when you think about it. Cause it's like, we've never had that problem with girls when like, you know, never has it been a consideration that like Lena was, and I were going to sleep with a girl. And then that girl was going to go and say something crazy about Lena or some shit, you know, it's can, can, Lena, not Lena. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, a lot of people get it wrong. Can, totally you, can you, um, Give me an example of something that Jason Love said. He just was kind of just talking. It's been a while. I haven't really had to think about it in a minute. But he was just kind of talking in a way that I took as kind of disrespectful. And, like, oh, like, I didn't think about that beforehand of, like, oh, this dude's going to actually do, like, a whole little mini media tour where he just talks about this shit. And kind of the, the, the interviewers are going to try to bait him into right, saying right. shit about me. So I can't even, like, really put it all on him when, obviously, he's going on platforms and people are trying super hard to get him to say some right. crazy shit so then mean like meanwhile me and her when we've talked about doing more stuff like this in the future she's like anytime we do it we're gonna do a group chat with the guy and like fully have a whole conversation about like we didn't like it when he did this like just please don't like put it out like this whatever because like i don't know i mean probably nobody's gonna ever care as much as the jason love one you know where if we could do that 10 more times and it's gonna <laughs> just keep getting less interesting to people right. as we keep doing it but like for sure. Like a partnership agreement of some sort. Yeah, it just is a little different. And in particular because of the way the, that the world perceives it, but also just because, well, yeah, it's all about perception, but it's definitely like, you know, us, us not doing it for seven years in our relationship and then finally doing it was just too irresistible for people. You right, know? especially right after you got married. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, that, that's the crazy part. But how, how about this? Everybody uh, finds it so controversial and, and so, uh, like, whatever, like, scandalous that your wife shot a scene with a, another man who's a professional star mm -hmm. in this industry. But nobody even, like, thinks twice about, like, you're giving a guy a high-five <sighs> Eiffel Tower like in the same like <laughs> while my wife is watching yeah <laughs> yeah definitely me and some french dude uh did an eiffel tower while we were banging a girl together the other day that was pretty epic shout out to alex uh i believe it was his name but uh yeah i don't know i mean me and her have like a very non-traditional relationship i guess just in the <laughs> sense that like but i mean the weird all right it's weird because there's so many different types of polyamorous relationships and stuff you know you have ones where the guy can cheat and the girl can and you have ones where they're both open and you have ones where like I, I know some people who they'll they'll be able to go sleep with a girl their wife can go sleep with a guy but they'll never see it and they'll never talk about it you know like there'll never be a video that they get to right. watch mm -hmm. whereas i know some guys like I, I know one guy who's a real like by definition cuck in the sense that he Wants his, to watch. His fetish, his girlfriend, at one point, he was telling her, I want you to go to the club. I want you to find a black guy with a big-ass dick. I want you to suck it, film it on your phone, or have him film it, and then you're going to come home, and we're going to watch it together, and we're going to fuck while we watch it. Like, that was his thing. He wanted to see all <laughs> that shit. 
for me and her, it really is just like an on camera thing because we don't really hook up with other girls off camera. Like we could, it's a possibility, but it just doesn't really happen. We're just kind of busy and stuff. So it's like, we don't, and we don't party. We don't go out. We're not at the club, but like all the situations that I could imagine it just kind of happening. Like we don't really exist in those situations, you know? So like, uh, yeah, for me and her, it's basically, basically just like an on camera thing that, you know, we, we realized that we could right. kind of make more money and make, people more excited about our relationship and more interested in our business by just kind of opening it up so so are you are you do you consider yourself an entrepreneur youtuber porn star all of the above all my these, friend, so yeah. did you go to like avn shows and stuff yeah we won a, a porn podcast of yeah. the year this year at avn so that was pretty Shit. cool yeah i i follow plug talk and i follow you on instagram sick and i said something that uh i think might be controversial. I, I certainly don't mean it at all disrespectfully, but whenever I've seen plug talk Instagram posts, and, and, and they're always like, it's you and Lena and then mm -hmm. you know the, the third party woman. Right. I don't think that ever has the third party woman been as attractive as Lena. Wow, that's a hell of a compliment. Thank you, Steve. -o. I, I, Appreciate I, I, that. Do you, do you agree with him? Uh, <laughs> He's kidding. You don't have to sure. answer that. I mean, to be honest, we've had some like unbelievably hot girls on over the years. Definitely gave her a run for her money, but for sure, I don't know. There's something about my girl that like whenever we're hooking up with another chick, no matter how good she looks, like I'm always kind of like really like more excited to fuck my wife in the threesome like i don't know it's yeah. just something about her like just i've always found very irresistible in a way that i can't even really put into words when you guys agreed to the jason love thing was there ever a moment in time where you you might have thought oh shit this might have been a bad idea yeah after she did it for sure i was like <laughs> <laughs> once like the the it was sort of like just a weird like feeling in the stomach of just like oh dude like was this a good idea like i don't know like like i, I kind of started to second guess myself and then i talked about it on the podcast and she put up this like instagram reel where she basically like you know was kind of laughing into the camera while he's walking up and back and uh that was when i really started to get the response from people of like basically like i, I guess i just didn't realize how many people were going to be infuriated over this but you knew that was going to happen though. but like, not it, i, not but to I the didn't extent. know it was going to be as crazy as it was yeah. where i didn't know like the whole world was going to stop and just be like <laughs> all right you know right. what fuck this dude let's get him you know like that that was kind of a surprise what, but. what did you do when she was like when she's like okay bye i'm gonna go did you go to baskin robbins and have an ice cream by yourself or no. like what what did you do during so, that time this is a perfect example of a time when you find yourself in a pressure cooker and you don't know how to handle the situation which makes me very happy that this episode is brought to you by better help it is an online service which matches people up with professional licensed licensed therapists. And let me tell you, it is very important. Even if you're not in a pressure cooker moment, like for me, it's all about my relationship. I want to make sure that my relationship stays healthy. So I work on my relationship in therapy to keep it healthy. That's why therapy is so important to me. And I believe it can really help you. I mean, better help has matched over three million people with therapists and you don't have to go to the like physical location you can do it online very easy and if you go to betterhelp.com slash stevo that's better h-e-l-p dot com slash stevo you can get 10 percent off your first month again it's a big deal therapy helps me i think it can help you so go to betterhelp.com slash stevo for 10 percent off your first month and let's get back to it one thing about me that a lot of my uh hip-hop oriented fans don't necessarily know is that i love playing poker more than almost anything in the world and i already was scheduled to play online that day because like when i want to play tournaments you kind of have to be ready to be on the computer uh, on the computer for like eight to ten hours you know so it's like i have to like really schedule it and you basically only want to play tournaments on sunday on the internet because there's just way more tournaments way more people playing and they're way uh, bigger buy-ins you know so like for me on a sunday when i play poker 
I'll I'll play maybe like ten to fifteen thousand dollars worth of tournaments. Like all the buy-ins are between like you know fifty bucks and like a thousand bucks or two thousand bucks. And so that's what I was already scheduled to do that day. And there's nothing that like would take my mind off of what else is going on in the world like for instance my wife getting fucked by this big ass black guy <laughs> more than like me playing poker tournaments so that's what i was doing all day and i think that's why i i didn't really think about it much while it was happening yeah. because i'm playing like 10 poker tournaments at the same time and like you have to be really really fucking focused to like not time out on your decisions when you're playing that many tournaments so that was probably the best thing i could have been doing at that time in in terms of like my mind not wandering or like thinking about it when, when did, she came back from the scene, was there any sort of like awkwardness no, between you and her? She came back and it was all good. Like uh, she got Dave's hot chicken delivered, <laughs> so that was pretty dope. And then we uh, talked about it, and then we ended up hooking up. And then you know it was pretty. I mean, I kind of I talked to her about my feelings throughout it. Like when I was feeling a little jealous or mm -hmm. a little bit like weird about the reaction I was getting, I just kind of talked to her about it, you know. And then like as time went by, it just felt more and more like not a big deal and like that, that's kind of the the thing i've heard from a lot of people who are in more in porn couples or in like polyamorous relationships where it's like you know there's always going to be this strange feeling in the beginning where you feel kind of like sick to your stomach or just sort of like uneasy about it and in particular you know i had to go through that with you know many many millions of people laughing at me but you know i feel like it uh you know now it doesn't really feel like as big a deal like me and her are gonna do a bunch of like instagram and uh, youtube content where we're sort of like searching for the next guy mm -hmm. we're kind of like planning all that out right now and like that now the idea of like oh like why is this supposed to be a big deal like it definitely doesn't feel like a big deal to me now even though like when it first happened it kind of felt like a little bit of a thing do you think it made the relationship stronger in a sense I think in a sense, yeah, just because like, you know, she had this like insane windfall of money and attention and I guess me too. And that sort of like, it just sort of made like, it made her really happy to be able to like, you know, really cash out at this point in her career, mm -hmm. I guess. And like, that sort of like, she was just like really, really thankful to me for being open minded enough to let it happen, you know? And I think that she was just really turned on by the sense of security of me like being willing to allow her to do that so i think it like really kind of up the ante in our personal sex lives so in that way for sure i think it was good yeah i feel like a lot of people came at you and, and you don't ever seem to get riled up i was watching you on the whatever podcast and that christian with the pastor <laughs> guy and he was saying some shit that they I think, really want him to go on that podcast the too, whatever podcast the that, so i if, like those guys if you want to make your way to santa barbara uh he would be super hyped to have you yeah wait is it uh like they're religious and they're no no, no 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 the whatever uh, i don't know who the main guy is he's always at the Brian, computer yeah he I, I like him but he always has like a, a myriad of guests on and different perspectives it's but like, like a dating podcast so he'll have like a bunch of chicks and a bunch of dudes and then a lot of times they kind of end up arguing about dating type stuff and everything sometimes it'll be kind of like a religious versus like well, a conservative that, versus liberal debate type thing yeah he had doesn't that, have a big audience yeah it's yeah. Pretty big, yeah he had that pastor on and he was like it was almost like he was trying to evangelize you but like yeah he was saying some things that maybe kind of pushed your buttons but like you always seem you answered the questions well you never overreacted and, and if anything like you're really calm during that and, and you and lena as well yeah i mean my whole thing is that if people disagree with my life decisions, that doesn't really like bother me. That doesn't make me feel angry at them. It doesn't make me feel like I, I want to like get it. Like it doesn't make me angry that they disagree with my decisions. And at the same time, a lot of their concerns are concerns that I have as well. Like when they say inevitably they get to, well, you have a child. Like, what about when your kid finds out about this? You know, it's like, it's not like I haven't thought about that. Like, mm -hmm. I've fucking thought about that plenty. I just then also made the decision to go through with it. And I do think it's kind of silly that people think like, well, you know, mom and dad hooking up with like, hundreds of girls online is okay but then as soon as there's one guy in the picture that that <laughs> if anything i think like when i picture myself explaining this to my like you know teenage daughter or like at a, whatever point she decides that she wants me to explain the porn side of my life i feel like it will probably seem a bit more fair if it's like yeah mom and dad have both done stuff with other people as well on camera or whatever but yeah i don't i don't hold it against people for taking issue with it i definitely I know it's not for everybody. And that, that's one of the weird things about it is that a lot of people take us doing 
uh, us doing this kind of content or her sleeping with another guy on camera as me and her wanting this change for the world that we want everyone to do this mm -hmm. and that it, like in particular in our case it's like we did this from a porn perspective from a money perspective from a business perspective not like like if my girl was just dying to fuck another guy honestly she would have just told me like hey like we should have a threesome with another guy that wasn't what we did we planned it all out and did it on camera like in terms of just the sheer enjoyment of having sex she would have probably had a much better time doing it off camera you know yeah. it's like we did it on camera because it's a business thing you know it turned out that it wasn't just on tmz but it was like an ongoing like mm. you know article after article on tmz and, and um a few things in life bring me more joy than being on tmz <laughs> like <laughs> Just because, you know, like, especially now, if you get on TMZ, then next thing you know, everyone else seems to get their news from, from TMZ. Like, yeah, there's something about it, right? Where like TMZ will hit me up to do some content and I just always say yes. Whereas like a lot of people, I would say no. But for some reason, it just being TMZ, you feel like, yes, like, like I was doing cardio in my neighborhood on that top left one. And they just texted me and they're like, can we ask you this question? And I'm like, well, I'm going to be doing cardio for like the next like, hour and a half. You. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I just turned my location on and I'm like, yeah, I mean, like pull up on me if you want. And they, they come through and they just film you talking about something. But TMZ is like, that's like real LA culture right there. Like you right. got to respect it. Well, some of the comments when like people bring up TMZ, they're like, oh God, they get their news from TMZ. But like TMZ is really fucking credible, right? You can like, trust them, yeah. Yeah. Can you say that for the record? Because there's a lot of people that are like, oh God, TMZ. But like they're. Th I, I think TMZ is a legitimate news source. They break all kinds of news. They uh, like. They hear it first a lot of times. Yeah, to, yeah. When Kobe died. Yeah. yeah. You they, know, like the, like stuff like that. Two minutes after. If anything, that's the argument against TMZ is like, you guys are too fast. It's kind of creepy. It's kind of weird. Like, yeah. you should let the families uh, find out about this at their own pace or whatever. Yeah, they right? found out about Kanye West's divorce before he found out about yeah, it. Yeah, right. Um, the, uh, yeah, dude, I've, I've found out about Ryan Dunn passing oh, from a, a call from TMZ asking me for a comment about it. That's Six o'clock in the morning. Um, but uh, it, it's just crazy. The, the, the last time when um, I had a thing, and, then I, and it wasn't even one where I reached out to them. Like, uh, <laughs> they, they, they hit me up, and they were like, did you just get arrested in London for jumping off the Tower of London Bridge? And I was like, oh, sort of. I've got a great video for you here, you know, like. <laughs> and uh, I was actually going to call you. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting ready to hit you up. Yeah. Uh, they... Uh, posted the story and um in the following like two days there were so many it was the biggest like got picked up everywhere like crazy and and my publicist sent me an email with uh all of the the stories like compiled into one email like mm -hmm. all the links and we have a joke with with noxo noxo would never send anybody his press I sent it to everybody. <laughs> so I sent to Noxo, like, oh, check out all my press. And his response was so funny. He wrote back, oh, Steve-O, thank you so much for um, compiling all 49 of these links. You really saved me a lot of work. <laughs> so there were 49 different publications that picked up that story from TMZ. It used to be... The Associated Press, AP, mm. was like the hub where now it's TMZ, dude. Yeah. If you can get them to talk about you, everybody will follow behind. Right. And so that, I, that I'm, I bring this up because I think that to the extent that this whole thing with, uh, with Lena and Jason Love being a windfall of money and attention, I got to believe TMZ had a lot to do with that. Yeah, probably. I mean, it honestly just like overnight, as soon as we started talking about it, it was just like every podcast just talking about it. And just I had so many people that I don't even think they knew about me before or they just never bothered to talk about me before who were just weighing in. One weird thing is just like how people will title their video as if you're the fucking Antichrist. And then when you actually watch it, it's kind of like a more nuanced like uh, right. calm conversation you know but if right. you just read the title you would think like oh my god they hate me mm -hmm. which is that's a weird part about it but then also just like i don't know i mean for me it's like 
if you're in a gay relationship or you're in a trans relationship, or you're in an open relationship, I don't give a fuck. I don't like, I just have no dog in that fight. I don't care at all. Like I might have some personal opinions about things, but uh, I would never think to like really care, but somehow like the, the, the whole th idea of like letting someone sleep with your wife is just the most insanely offensive notion to people. And it's just like, it was kind of weird to be on the receiving end of it of just like, oh, like people really are just infuriated by this to, And especially as like a porn couple, which to me, that was kind of the thing that I thought would make it seem acceptable to an extent to people is like, well, we are a porn couple. So it's like, people are going to be able to kind of understand that. And like right. the way people talked about it and reported on it, you would like almost have no idea that I do porn too. You would think that like, she was just fully like taking control of the relationship and being like, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. When in reality, it was this like very meticulous planned out thing by us, you know? Yeah. Who was, who came up with the idea first? Um, well, it kind of just came to be an idea because we did this like TikTok with Jason Love in uh, January in Vegas where uh, I think I said, who's the hottest girl here? And he said, mm. or he said, he like put his arm around Lena and then like walked off camera for the TikTok. And like, I was just like, oh, like standing there and it was fake. But uh, after that, it just kind of became this like huge swell of people requesting uh, that. And so, you know, she, she mentioned it and like, you know, I kind of saw the, the value or whatever. We hadn't necessarily had a lot of like PR around that time. And like, you know, with the plug talk thing, it's like we, we work with a different girl every week, but sometimes it doesn't feel like it's kind of hard to like make people care about that. Like for some reason that doesn't really like get people like super excited. Like when we first started it, it was kind of viral. And it's like at a certain point you just, you work with a different person each week and it just doesn't really seem like it gets people going that much. So like from our perspective, it was kind of like, Oh, this is like a way to sort of make shit more exciting, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So here's one. The last time we linked up, for, for a podcast, I had a buddy of mine um, reach out and he says, Hey, man, I saw you were over there at the No Jumper uh, headquarters. He says, Man, be really careful. Like, be really careful. Or, like, I'm, <clears throat> I'm worried about you. <clears throat> There's, like, really, like, you know, shady, bad people. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know. And, uh, I, I didn't really feel that way. I remember when I walked in, like, they did, like, heavy marijuana, and I'm just thinking, oof, mm. man, I wonder if they could, like, maybe air out the pot. That's maybe. why we got a bigger spot now, so there would <laughs> be a little bit more <laughs> right, breeziness. No, wait, I had no problem with that today. Okay. But, but what, uh, I, I just was struck by that because there was genuine concern coming from this buddy of mine, and, uh, like, I just kind of want your reaction interesting fact about my buddy who expressed this concern is that he might have been into a little bit of gang activity himself back in the day plus he was a big time football player and how happy are we that football is back baby and you know who's an official's betting partner of the NFL, it's DraftKings Sportsbook, baby. And boy, do they have a deal for you. They're ready to hook you up with $200 in bonus bets if you bet just five bucks on NFL this week one. And they've got a new deal every week for the whole month of September. That's if you download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the promo code Stevo. Yep. That's right, they're hooking people up like it's going out of style. So if you're planning on betting on football anyway, then hallelujah for DraftKings Sportsbook. Now, download the app and use the promo code Stevo, and good luck, baby. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-H-O-P-E-N-Y or text H-O-P-E-N-Y 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hills Casino and Resort, KS. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See dkng.co slash football for eligibility, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Jump on this, have a blast, and let's get back to it. I mean, we've had a lot of shady shit over the years, especially when we were on Melrose with the situation where the guy put the gun in my face and all that kind of stuff. And, like, 
uh, that reputation has kind of like followed us to a certain extent because, you know, now, you know, people just kind of think of stuff like that. It's kind of hard for them to get that out of their memory. But uh, yeah, and I mean, realistically, it's like we interview a lot of gang members. There have been a few different incidents over the years, not like shootings or anything like that, but, you know, people just sort of running into each other that don't get along and there's a heated argument behind the scenes or some shit like that and the video comes out or whatever. But, like, even even today, like, there was, like, probably 20 gang members in, in there, like, doing the interview right before yours. And, you know, to me, it's nothing because I know that by virtue of them coming through with people that have respect for me, that they're not going to do anything shitty while they're here. And that I just kind of like live with faith in that, you know, and like in particular, somebody like you, I mean, you would have nothing to worry about because what the fuck do they care? Even if they don't know you, it's just like, oh, it's some random white guy walked in here like who gives a shit, you know? So, I mean, to me, I think we run a pretty tight ship now. We have security, our security pretty much like whenever we're doing interviews or whatever, they, they take everybody's uh, weapons away or whatever before they're allowed wow. to enter the premises. Yeah. Is there like a metal detector or anything? Um, He does run a metal detector over them, yeah, and he finds a lot of guns and knives that he confiscates for the duration of their interview, yeah. Wow. What's the biggest gun you've taken away from somebody? Uh, you know, I don't really... Ever, like an Uzi or like an AK I or something? I don't get involved, so I don't know if it's been anything beyond a handgun. That would be pretty fucking crazy if you found an Uzi sticking out of somebody's <laughs> yeah, backpack or something, yeah. Can, can you weigh in for, for us on the, the YNW Melly case? Do you think he's going to get off, or do you think he's going to stay in for a while? Ah, uh, well, it's like he either gets, like, life, basically, or, the like, death some... death penalty, right, is what they're going I, I after? I think the death penalty is still on the table, yeah. But uh, do I think he's going to beat it. I don't know. I've been kind of amazed by the extent to which his uh, team, his managers, and his family are, like, super, super confident that he's going to get off. Um, but then at the same time, uh, I don't know. There is a lot of evidence that looks really fucking bad for him. I know that, like, in Florida, they straight up have a, a, a real desire to get him that they've had for Make a an long example. time yeah because he he beat like uh, some murder charge or something back you in the day shoot at a cop or something yeah well that that was actually part of this uh these charges i think i don't know but like he, he there's been other murder investigations that he got off on in the past and i remember even when i first met him he told me like the cops where i'm from he's like they want me they want me so bad you know so then when they got him for all this shit i guess i wasn't really that surprised but i don't know i mean as somebody who was like actually really close with him, he he's a weird one because I have so many friends who either got killed or overdosed like in the early stage of my career, like Draco the Ruler or Lil Peep or um, uh, Juice World or whatever, and or X uh, X X Sensation. But then somebody like Melly, I haven't seen him in five years. It's kind of like weird to be like, oh shit, like he might actually come back and we might actually be able to like you know run around and do stuff together again. Hmm. Man, there was, uh, like, for your whole media, like, conglomerate, like, you, you had all these different podcasts and stuff, and I remember seeing stuff saying that, like, you had people who were in your crew, and then they left and started their own podcast, mm -hmm. and that was, like, really controversial. Yeah, like, I kind of slowly built up this uh, team of dudes who are doing podcasts on the channel, and then within, like, the same sort of month-long period, like, basically, like, seven or eight of those guys basically ended up leaving, like, in two different groups and basically started two separate podcasts, you know, like, where with them basically doing the exact same thing they were doing on a jumper but doing it on their own platform and stuff. But, I mean, we have so many different hosts on the channel that, like, honestly like it wasn't really that big of a deal for us to kind of rebuild and start and have all of our shows kind of come back together and stuff so honestly like that was like a very stressful thing to go through for a little while there but i think the the thing that was painful about it was just that they sort of like painted this weird victim narrative on the way out to try to like convince the fans that they had been like treated pretty badly but then when it came down to it they were basically unable to like identify anything that actually happened that was like shitty or bad for them. You know, it was like, the truth is, is that they just kind of thought that they had enough juice to be able to do what they were doing on no jumper 
on their own and that they thought that they were basically like worth more than they actually were you know and so, so like jackie the joke man leaving howard stern yeah it was that kind of thing where like they just kind of i think they overestimated how important they were to no jumper's success and they thought that if they left that everything would just fall apart and then that didn't really happen and now like a lot of their friends are on the channel and like kind of have the jobs that they had before so then meanwhile like their stuff isn't really doing that good compared to how it was doing when it was on no jumper so i i know that they're kind of feeling like fuck like why do we why do we do this but they kind of have to keep the whole image going that they're like happy and boastful and like having a good time but i think like deep down inside they probably know they fucked up but you know Maybe in the future we'll be able to reunite once the the once time kind of humbles them a little bit. <laughs> once they bend the knee and kiss the ring. Nah, <laughs> they don't even have to kiss the ring. I mean, well, I guess I have a ring now, yeah. But uh, it's hard out there for a pimp. Yeah, you know. Uh, I, uh, yeah, that'd be kind of gay. They don't have to kiss the ring. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we have a friend that's on this podcast that's getting into the porn industry. I'm not going to say any names, Ooh. but do you have any advice for somebody starting out that's like trying to get their numbers up on in the porn world? Well, it's kind of weird because, like, the girls all get BBLs and fake boobs. So, like, even if they're kind of, like, a regular-looking girl, they can get, you know, fake lips installed and they get, you know, uh, the BBL, the, oh, the fake dude. tits, whatever. What do you say? I'm so sorry I just interrupted. I was doing so great up until then. Um, on his podcast, I gave him a bottle of Steve-O's hot sauce for your butthole, yeah. which is available on Amazon. He looked at the... The caricature, the the label on our Stevo's hot sauce bottle, and he says, "Oh, this this looks like you have BBL." <laughs> and I'm like, "What the hell?" Brazilian butt Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it, definitely. Yeah, you got a little right, badonka right, donk. Right, right, right here, I can see, like I, I kind of see it now. Yeah, but no, like uh, the whole thing was. It wasn't that I. Uh, oh no. Okay. If you want to be a guy getting into porn, it's like really you just have to have a big dick that's like the whole Oof. thing and so Oof. i'm kind of a, like mine is like Shucks. i think six and three quarters or so like i'm still under seven but reasonably uh girthy and i'm still like very much at the smaller end of the spectrum compared to like all the other dudes in porn because like this is certainly not my specialty i wasn't born to do this once you really get in the game you start to realize that there's dudes injecting stuff into their dicks and that there's all kinds of different to beef it up or to make it hard or what you know it's still a little bit of a mystery to me but i know that they definitely do stuff like they just inject like sort of like silicone into it or something to just like add girth to it i think yeah. But yeah. definitely some of these guys are just, like, naturals, just born with huge dicks and stuff. So that's definitely, like, a lot of guys seem like they want me to tell them you could still do it even if you don't have a big dick. And it's, like, my thing is, like, I feel like I have a small dick. So it's, like, probably I would say mine is kind of, like, the smallest. But, but you just won an award, so that's... Yeah, the, I think the idea is kind of more... Or the award is more, like, oh, like... The, the idea for the podcast and stuff more so than like my particular like I, I that's yeah. my nightmare i don't want to be compared to the johnny sinses and the dreads of the world because it's just they're in a different category how you about know? this though dude like i've always thought and then it's been a long time since i watched porn like that's kind of a, a, a no-fly zone for me so like I, i'm a sexually sober nerd but um when i was super into watching it um it bothered me that uh, that everybody had to have such a big wiener. Like, I, I, I don't like it. And and let me qualify that statement because my buddy, my jackass buddy Chris Pontius said something that really resonated with me. We, I agree. He said that uh, he has no interest in girl on girl content. Mm. He says watching lesbian porn is like watching a skate video with nothing but ramps and nobody riding them yeah no i'm totally in agreement so with that true. i can't watch lesbian <laughs> porn yeah it's so, a snooze fest right so now the, now the, the reason why i think that's something that resonates with people is because like there's nothing to relate to there's no point of of like uh focus to for for relating like mm. you know that's why watching uh co-ed porn you know a guy and a girl like you, you're kind of somehow like vicariously you're related your point of reference you're relating to the guy and so now with like the, the 
big, huge wieners kind of ruin that for me because it makes it unrelatable. So I, I, always, I always said that if I could, like, you know, have my wish, there would be a category of, you know, on Pornhub or whatever, like a category, like, if not, like, small wiener porn. Like Reasonable wieners. Normal wiener porn. Yeah, you normal know? wiener porn. I feel like that probably wiener. actually I, is Yeah, out I was just going to say. It's got to be. I'm sure there's category. every category yeah. out yeah. there. And, and that's one thing that girls will tell you about their OnlyFans is that one of the biggest requests is that people want dick ratings. And a lot of times it'll be guys with big dicks who want the girl to tell them that their dick is small. Or it'll be guys with small dicks that want them to tell them that their dick is big. Or sometimes it'll be small dicks where they want the girl to tell them that their dick is small. You know, so it's like there's all kinds of like different stuff. And I, I feel like a lot of people probably get kind of turned off by the giant dick thing. Even for me, like my boy Dredd, he's, like, he's pretty much got the biggest dick in the world. And I'm subscribed to his OnlyFans. But sometimes <laughs> like I... When girls are sucking his dick, it's like, bro, the thing is, as long as this fucking microphone stand, it's like, it doesn't, they're giving him head and they're sucking about this much of it. Right. They can't That's really, the other thing. you know, whereas, like, when I'm getting head, when I'm doing a porno, a lot of times the girls got her fucking lips on my pubic hair, like, because they're yeah. able to consume the whole thing, whereas they can never do that to this guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Vinny, would you ever let your girl go on plug talk? And I thought we were confronting Adam-22 on this episode. Woof. Vinny just got blasted. And safe to say, most people's answer to that question is a simple no. And no used to be my answer to accepting help in the bedroom. But I don't know what I was so afraid of. Because it turns out that a little help in the bedroom is a lot of fun. And that's why I love Blue Chew tablets. Why? Because they've got the same active in ingredient as both Viagra and Cialis. Except they only cost a fraction of the price. And for the listeners of the Wild Ride podcast, you can get an entire month supply of Blue Chew tablets completely for free. All you pay is five bucks for shipping. I mean, come on, couldn't be easier, couldn't be more fun. You go to bluechew.com, use the promo code STEVO, take care of the prescription right there in record time with the online medical provider, and boom, an entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets is on its way to you for free. All you pay is five bucks in shipping. And man, I can assure you, it's a lot of fun. So go to bluechew.com and use the promo code Stevo. Now let's get back to it. <laughs> I don't know. We would have to sit down and I have a serious conversation. Does she I do can't. porn? <laughs> yeah, well here. She, she has. Okay, well if she does porn, then that's. I thought like I'm thinking she's just a regular girl. I'm like, damn, he should probably say no. Okay, ch check <laughs> this out. At one point, I uh, well I. I, I like to keep keep my my body hair shaved, you know, like uh, you could like I'll, you know, I'll shave it. Me too. So, I remember uh, shaving one time, and and uh, just just for some reason I thought like I'll put it in a bag, you know, put it in a bag, and then I did it again, did it again. Next thing you know, I I ended up like saving all of my pubes and body hair, all the shavings I saved in a bag for like two years. <laughs> two when, years. When I, and, and it was still wasn't even that much. Right. And, and I had the, the, the crazy idea, I'm going to make a, a Sasquatch suit out of pubic hair. Out of your own hair. Yeah. Wow. But, but I was getting nowhere near it. So I was like, okay, you know what? Sadly, for this to become a, real, a reality, I need to like you know, have a, a pube party. So I did like a meetup. I was like, okay, everybody, if you're a guy with like lots of pubic hair, bring me bring a, pubes, a, bring, yeah. a ra bring a razor. And like, I, I, I had this crazy event where like literally like a hundred dudes showed up. It's at least a hundred dudes. Wait, right? so For they sure. were like 300 dudes. Like, I, okay. So many dudes that got COVID after that event. I, I, <laughs> but I, they I, didn't I, come with a bag of pubes. They came I, and they, shaved they, the yeah, pubes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, and, and I did the shaving, right? So, like, and everybody had to bring their razor because it would have been weird if one razor is going from one guy to the next guy. So everybody brought their own razor. That was when I learned that Manscaped absolutely makes the best grooming products for shaving pubes. Well, I can confirm because that is also what I use to shave yeah. my body. Yeah. yeah, hands down. So, like, I, as I'm doing I filled up, like, a grocery bag 
full of just random dudes' pubes wow. in this session. And what was striking about it and why I bring this to you is that my uh, opinion of what an average-sized wiener is uh -huh. changed dramatically over the course of that event. Because you saw so many small dicks? Yeah, and, and I wasn't out there trying to look at people's wieners. Right. You, could, you could easily expose your pubes and not your wiener, but guys were just like carelessly <laughs> like, carelessly just pulling down. I saw way more wieners than, I didn't sign up to look at people's wieners. I just accidentally, coincidentally did. No. And yeah. the, av like, I, there's a thing called a micro penis. Yes. So like I saw dudes. I, I saw dudes pull their 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 waistline down, like their belt line down, and it was like, it like picture like an actual light switch. Like once their their <laughs> their light their their belt went down a certain bit, like it was just like the. The, the little micro penis yeah. went, went up like a like a light switch. I was so shocked at how small a wiener it can get. I had no idea before then, and I was equally shocked at how far off my impression of what an average size wiener is. It's way by the end of that day, I felt like I am huge. Yeah, <laughs> no, because I used to live in Koreatown, and I would go to the gym. You want to see some small dicks. You go to the gym in Koreatown, man. I fucking would be walking through that locker room just like, oh, my fucking God, that barely exists. That's a caterpillar. <laughs> yeah. That's a fucking a shrimp. Like hidden in pubes. Yeah. Yo, just this barely a dick. Like, I, I don't know. It's yeah, kind of was, amazing. There was a couple of dicks that popped out when Steve was shaving, and I was like, oh, fuck, like, that guy must be embarrassed because he's facing the crowd. And I, and I was like... Oh my god! And then and then I looked up at his face, and he's just like, "Yeah!" <laughs> like stoked on life. It's probably kind of freeing for him because he probably walks around with like a little bit of shame for his tiny dick. Dude, sometimes. I don't even think that the the younger generation like somebody told me that because the theory is that the reason why there's like so like micro penises now there's more micro penises than ever, and people are becoming like hairless is because of the like the the heated up plastics when you drink water. You know how they say like, "Oh, don't drink water when it's like." Heat, heat it up because uh, there's, it's like the plastic chemicals are bad for you. That's why we drink liquid death, baby. Yeah. yeah well, they said like the the heated up like one of the things that it does it's like a it's like a heated up plastic thing where it's like making the, like the next generation like there's more micro penises, there's m like less hair on people's body. It's like it really have an effect. Are wow. boobs getting bigger? I don't probably because of the hormones in the milk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Are they? Well, we also have an obesity epidemic in this country, so that probably adds to it. And then also, like, I remember I found out, like, how much taller dudes are now versus yeah. 100, 200, 300 years ago. And I thought it was all genetics, like tall people sleeping with other tall people and then having tall children. No. But then it's probably mostly nutrition. No, no, what? You know? uh, Isaac, can you look up the average height and weight from somebody that fought in the Civil War? Yeah, like five foot tall. Huh? Yeah, you know, like, like five nine, one thirty. Average weight and height. But just of, think about how little they were eating in comparison to us. Five eight, one forty. Five eight, one forty. What do you think the average height of a dude is That's these days? Not like, that. Five eight's not that short. That's not it? that different. My my, uh, but one forty. Oh. All right. I mean, that, the average that sounds person, very small. Yeah. So what's the average person now? One hundred ninety-seven pounds. Is average and the average height is me? the average height is five, five nine. nine one ninety seven. So wow. the, they didn't get any taller. They just got a lot That's wider. Like, <laughs> dude, yeah. think about that fifty pounds. But I, I well, mean, that's unbelievable. What, everybody's, what is everybody making fun of Donald Trump's mugshot because they said he's six two two fifteen? Yo, his his claimed height and weight is my exact height and weight. So. I yeah. feel like I'm in a little bit better shape than Donald Trump. Like yeah. he's like pretty he's morbid like looking. But then they also have. But then okay, if you were to look at me with my shirt off, and then look at all I've seen all these tweets with like you know football players and soccer players who are two fifteen six three, and they look like fucking superheroes because they're like all yeah. muscle, whereas like I'm less muscle, more fat. So it's like you can have like a very <laughs> wide variety of different body types. I'm, I'm six foot to like two fourteen. Oh yeah. So okay. like. I mean, yeah, if we were to stand next to each other with our shirts off, we probably wouldn't look too different. You think you can kick my ass? <laughs> I don't know. You gotta, gotta, I'm, I'm, wait, I'm looking at your fingers. They look kind of like... Yeah, I bite, I bite my nails. I'm a nervous nail. It looks like you had like parts of them cut off with like, yeah. the actual finger. No, I bite my nails too. It's a bad habit. 
<laughs> I don't know. Do you have any like martial arts training or anything I should know about? He's oh yeah, I'm, I, I've, I've taken six classes of jujitsu. I'm a white belt. I might have taken like twenty classes of jujitsu. So oh. that's my guess. I did it for like maybe six months or something. Nah, but I, I don't think I can fight. That's why, I like, because I'm, I'm pretty sure I could get a good bag doing the celebrity boxing thing. But uh, how about yeah, that? You don't seem don't like know. a like fighter. Like you kind of like pretty mellow. I don't, yeah, I don't think I have, like, really great hand-eye coordination. I don't really think that, like, fighting is probably what I should be putting my attention into. But it's like, dick is... But, but it's, like, almost <laughs> everybody who's in my position seems to be doing boxing matches, you know? Like, if you're, like, a mid-level influencer, you got something going on, it's like, oh, you do this, you get to make tons of content about it, you get to actually get paid to fight. You, you've thought about it? I'm, I'm too old for that. So that's like, thought about I don't know it. if anyone's too old you now. You challenged I'd Bieber. Like, I mean, when uh, when Justin Bieber came out with a tweet saying, I want to fight Tom Cruise in the octagon, I went racing to Vegas to go uh, record with Dana White. And, mm. and so when I said to Dana White, I think Tom Cruise is afraid of Justin Bieber, but I'm not. And I want to fight Justin Bieber. But I knew that it would never happen. Right. It's like Bradley Martin. Yeah. <laughs> you think yeah. you could take me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I meant to ask you about yes, everybody. <laughs> I meant to ask you about this Fousey tube drama. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. you owe him oh, millions. Well, dude, I feel... I've, I've, Is that the guy that would dress up at, like, a Mortal Kombat in elevators and, like... Yeah. Yes. He also claimed that I made millions of dollars off this shirt when right. I was, for the record... We might have made like thirty thousand dollars, which is still a lot, but like that's not a million, right? Never mind multiple millions, right? Is I, he out of his mind? And look at how there's you just have some random. Oh, I guess this might actually be the real shirt, but like as soon as you make a shirt these days, you just have so many people bootlegging a shirt. That's why you got to silk screen it. Yeah, that's why you got to like do. It's sold like by a, Big Clit. Yeah. Big Clit. You got to do the the full deal silk screen. That Otherwise, guy Brian from whatever he has a charity that he started called BLM, but it stands for Big Labia's Matter, <laughs> <laughs> which I think is what? actually kind of honorable that he's trying to raise awareness about <laughs> labias of all sizes. You know, what's your whole take on this Fousey thing? Do you think it's like strategic in a way where, like oh, him no. going crazy? I is... don't think it's strategic at all. I think he's actually losing it. But I mean, this is just something that happens to him every couple of years. It seems right. is that he just. You know, because he's, he's been doing content since 2018 for, like, the past five years. He's been no, streaming. he's been doing way longer than that. No, but yeah, I'm he saying, took like, a break for a while. in 2018 is when he lost his fucking mind and had this right. whole thing at Fousey in uh, right, 2018. Right, right, right. Yeah. And, like, we all sort of documented it and stuff. And in retrospect, it's like, damn, we were really kind of clout chasing off of a dude who was having a manic episode. And then he just literally, like, has continued to stream and stuff. But now he's having another manic episode. Right. And so everybody is tuned tuned in and watching and you know one thing that i thought was super interesting that i found out in all this is like when i used to watch his vlogs back in the day in like 2015 2016 he would always talk about his addiction but he would never be specify what it yeah, was he would never say what it was and i'd always be like trying to figure it out in my head and i'm like you know you're not doing hard drugs because i can just tell by like your skin and like your your body and stuff it just doesn't look like you're fucked up like if you were an alcoholic or something you would seem drunk so i was just always trying to figure it out and like through this he he actually ended up coming clean and admitting that he was addicted to prostitutes so that kind of like totally uh -huh. adds up because that's something that you can go do and then you like return to your normal life and it seems like nothing is wrong right right but yeah i mean i i feel I guess I just feel bad for him, but I mean, he is such a dickhead that it's almost kind of hard to feel it's bad so for him. This was like a, recently. It, oh, yeah, this was the other day. Up. This is how he got arrested. I don't think he's posted online since he got arrested. He didn't get arrested, right? He got taken to, to a, a psych, psych ward. ward for a, like 5150, mm -hmm. even though in Florida that's called a Baker But But I don't think he's been on live again. And I think the whole problem is, is that he's just like, he he removes everybody from his life that wants to try to help him or like you know guide him in the right direction because it's so obvious to everybody that he's just losing his fucking mind and that things are going very right. badly but anybody who wants to take issue with that like you know you have a support system around you where i'm sure if you started fucking up that he's gonna call you out and you have like a bunch of people Big around time. you that are gonna be able to make it clear to you that this isn't cool he just like removes everybody from his life as soon as they try to help him out you know I right. think Kim and Vitaly should get into the ring. I think they they were best friends at a certain point. They were, right. yeah. yeah. Um, the uh, thing with we were on your podcast. 
again, we we double uploads. So, Simultaneous so uploads, so, and yeah. And we talked about totally different stuff on each podcast. True. So absolutely consume both of them. And on your podcast, you're, you're saying how uh, when people become successful, it's kind of human nature that they start treating other people badly. They think they're better than other people. And, and I said, well, you know, there's growing pains mm. to becoming like a famous person. And um, it just seems that the, with Fusi, like, it, it, he's not through the growing pains. It seems like for the last five years or so, though, that he's been pretty humble and pretty low-key because he's sort of, like, you know, lost everything in terms of his riches and his YouTube fame and everything. And, you know, he's streaming, and he had, like, a smaller audience and stuff. But now, as soon as he started to, like, do really good again – it just like completely fucked him up where he just started to just behave like a total imbecile. And yeah, and I think what's trying to worth? stream 24 seven for a whole right. year is just, I'm not pretty feasible. sure he doesn't have a lot of money. He did at a certain point because of YouTube and everything, but I'm pretty sure he squandered most of it. I want to root for him. I want to be like, you know, down for him. Six but, million. But this, I don't know uh, that. That, that shit's never. Yeah. Never would you have him on the pod? I, I would. I, 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 th I think I would have him on the pod, and that's just shamelessly, like, uh, just doing it for views. But uh, but I'll say this. I was driving around with Isaac the other day, and we were talking about the uh, the latest Fousey episode. I think it was with Isaac. And um, he says, uh, you know, well, he's just having this manic episode. It's not really him. And I said, well, consider it like this. Somebody's an alcoholic. They're super drunk. They, they say something like, sure, yeah, they were drunk, but what they said was the truth. Sometimes. You know? Right. Sometimes. I've had alcoholics in my life who would say things that clearly were not true. You know? Right, like, right. understood. Well, so, so how, long right do, sometimes. how long do manic episodes last normally? But let me finish my thought here, is that when, with what I see with FouseyTube, yes, he's having a manic episode, but what he's saying is douchey you know like mm. like the the manic episode might be like you know clouding his judgment to let the the douchey things be said but you're either a douchey or not like the, the you know like the, you got to be a douche to say i'm so viral like yeah. you, know, you don't know who i am like all that kind of stuff no yeah i mean it, it's both where it's like you know he's kind of an asshole even when he's not having the manic episode but like this irl streaming thing of just like walking around all fucking day with a camera filming yourself going to clubs and bars and restaurants and just making like a, a constant 24-hour live stream out of your life Every person that I've ever known who did this for any period of time, it pretty much always, like, had a very catastrophically negative impact on their life. Like, Ice Poseidon, I mean, I won't even begin to get into it, but go look it up. It completely ruined his entire life, basically. Like, you know, I have, I, I know a bunch of people who have had, like, real problems, and it's, people will tune in and watch you on a consistent basis if they feel like you might crash out and right. ruin your entire life. Yeah. That's just super interesting to them, you know? Like, whereas if you have it all together, a lot of times, like, people kind of stop tuning in because they just realize, like, like, I guarantee you if I started smoking crack, that like my podcast views would go through the roof because you would be watching hmm. a train wreck in slow motion, <laughs> that's so you know? Funny. Dude, that's so funny. I got, I got clean and sober in 2008. Yeah. And in 2011, Charlie Sheen started talking about the tiger blood and the thing. Tar Charlie Sheen got on Twitter. One tweet, Charlie Sheen sold out an entire theater tour, like big-ass theaters. A tour? On, a whole tour. <laughs> sold out on one tweet because everybody was That's just crazy. so down and ready to go buy a ticket to go watch Charlie Sheen wow. melt down on stage. And, <laughs> and, and, and like three years, I'm sober at that point for three years, and I could not help but think, man, Charlie Sheen's kind of killing it right now. He's the most famous guy in the whole world. God, yeah. if I got loaded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, I actually had to fight off temptation to get loaded wow. because Charlie Sheen was getting so much attention. Right. No, yeah. And that, like me and my girl, even like once we started going so viral for the, th the scene with the other guy or whatever, we started to realize like, oh, 
anything we say or do regarding our relationship right now in particular will be so viral and i was and she even suggested like i well, mean we should fight like maybe we should have like a fake fight thing and i was like i thought about it for a little bit i'm like nah we can't do it because it's like as soon as we start like that's really playing with fire right there is like when you start <laughs> creating fake narratives to yeah. get attention i'm like that's what i'm not willing to do like we can joke around and troll a little bit but i definitely i'm not trying to like get to the point where me and you are like creating fake shit in our life just for TV. attention you but, can't deceive your audience but anything unstable really like harnesses energy like F fusi has had fifty thousand live viewers on kick streaming like mm -hmm. for you know a couple weeks now which is like I think honestly, like a couple months ago, he might have had like a thousand people watching him, and now he's like fifty thousand, just because everybody likes watching a, a NASCAR race where they think that they might see a car accident. You know, right? Yeah, I mean, like everybody that has like a manic episode seems to go. I mean, Aaron Carter. Mm. Every time Britney Spears speaks a word, she's on TMZ. Like, I wonder where the free Britney people are at now. Like, are, yeah, are right. the free Britney people like? Okay. <laughs> but see, that makes me wish that I had gone with my gut a little bit more because when they were going hard trying to free Britney, I remember just thinking like, nah, bro. Like they need to <laughs> keep her ass locked up. She is not good. Like she needs this support system around her. But I didn't want to say it on Twitter because I didn't want to get attacked. And now I'm seeing it play out and I'm like, fuck, I should have like really stake right. that claim because i know that i know her like a uh, husband or like soon to be ex-husband because i used to work out at the same gym as him and i would just be working out next to this guy all the time we always talk about random shit talk about working out whatever but i never had the balls to just be like so what the fuck are you doing with the psychopath like you know yeah. i always wanted to ask him like what are you doing because he's like bro no homo but like beautiful man like extremely good looking he's like on the cover of like you know exercise magazines and wow. shit like that and now and, and i was just always wondering like bro you're like dating this crazy person does like, he get paid out when he divorces uh, her they were only together for a year so no well yeah plus like that would be the, the gnarliest prenup of all time i feel his like. name is sam it's a, it's the top right guy right there actually if you want to I've, yeah, but I feel like there was when Bill Murray got divorced. I remember they were talking about it on a show. Like he was married for thirteen years, he had a prenup, and she still got a fuckload of money. And they're like, "Yeah, well, I mean, prenups really, really don't do anything," because she still got paid out. Huh. So I wonder. Yeah, when I did my prenup, I realized that there's, you know, they're not gonna let you do a prenup that just like completely fucks your partner. Right. Like you have to like, like the the thing that they did with ours is basically like. If we split up after a year, I don't really have to do anything. If we split up after five years, then the person who makes more money kind of has to, like, you know, compensate the other person more. If it's 10 years, then it reaches, like, a certain level, which I do think is fair because sure. it's like, yeah, totally. you know, if, if my wife gives me, you know, 10 years of her prime reproductive exactly. years and she's kind of, like, primarily – you know, she's taking the care of the kid more than I am. And, you know, that's – like, I, I try to do as much as I can, but ultimately – that's like unpaid labor and the you know the, sure. whatever kind of yeah. settlement you do when you get divorced or whatever that's basically like compensating for how much time the wife probably spent taking time away from her career to help with the kids which i do think is fair even though a lot of times you hear about people having to pay you know 80 grand a month and shit you're like oh that doesn't sound fair at all yeah, yeah kevin costner's paying like 130,000 a month oh yeah i saw on tmz Ke kevin costner's uh like a stranger ex-wife $129,000 a month won't cut it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember That's when Dr. Dr. Dre's wife got uh, the money. It was like $90,000 a month laundry bill or something like I mean, it was an insane Whoa, amount what? of payout. But I, I didn't know Kevin Costner was worth $400 million. Yeah. No, that's it's for sure all like a percentage of how much you're bringing in. Because, yeah, I mean, like I even seen people saying that about Britney Spears is a uh, – uh, the guy Sam that she's divorcing right now where it's like his apartment I guess is 10 grand a month and I've seen a lot of people on Twitter like these fucking rich people like I, my apartment is $3,000 a month why does this guy need a $10,000 a month spot and I'm like 
I don't think Britney Spears is pulling up to hang out with a guy at a three thousand dollar a month For spot sure, in right. LA. Like you got to realize, there's <laughs> levels to this shit. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure because like wherever he lives is probably like a like in Beverly Hills or some shit. He's probably like in Summerlin next to Oprah. Yeah, like his ten thousand dollar a month spot is probably not some crazy baller spot. It's probably just in a really nice area yeah. where you need to spend ten thousand dollars to get anything, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, he and and I heard that like he. He's made a couple investments in like tech companies that like blew up. Really, and that's how he was able to. When when that did blow up, he was able to fund the Hatfield and McCoys. Oh. Like he funded the whole production. But like, I mean, he is one of the best actors of all time. Mm. But four hundred million dollars is is quite a lot. No, that's for real. That's I mean, yeah. got to be. I mean, isn't Samuel L. Jackson the highest grossing actor of all time? But I mean, does he have more than Kevin Costner? Hmm. Uh... I mean, you can never count. You can never trust the celebrity net worth. Samuel Jackson, yeah. five billion. Whoa, five well, billion. What? Yeah, I mean, he's, yeah, he's Jesus. been in the most movies of any actor. He must just Hundreds have crazy investments and shit, you know, because it's wow. like it's all about what you're gonna do with it. Like, if you could make four hundred million and just put it in the bank, that's one <laughs> thing. If you make make a couple million and you invest it intelligently, and all of a yeah. sudden it's worth so much money, you're not gonna become a billionaire by just being an actor, you know? Right. I don't think. Yeah, I mean, I've been waiting to hear The Rock joined the billion dollar club. Like, oh, he's probably Avengers? It, it he's got, close, oh. or is he in it? I mean, I would think. Like, I would I mean, think too. It, like nobody hustles harder or pushes more stuff than The Rock. Mm -hmm. It's crazy that hip hop lost a billionaire. Everybody had Kanye, and then he just made some bad decisions, and he lost yeah. his billionaire status. He, he's not a billionaire anymore, Kanye. <laughs> That's what they said. He lost it like him. overnight. They dropped him from like. Over over a billion to like four hundred million at a certain point. Yeah, oh, yeah wow, yeah. one point five to because that's when uh, Adidas let him go, right? Yeah, you never know how accurate this is going to be, but this yeah. is this has been wide. I mean, anything quoted. he does once, when once he's Forbes a... starts saying it, yeah. that, like when Forbes says, "Oh, now they're a million, they just became a, a billion, then I believe it. I mean, do yeah. Taylor Swift? I mean, Jesus Christ! I'm pretty sure she made a billion dollars like on this tour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, on yeah. They, they had they had a picture of her and. Um, who is Justin Bieber's ex, Ariana Grande? Yeah. And it was Justin like, Bieber's ex is Ariana Grande? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, a long time ago. Selena yeah, long time Gomez. Ago. Selena Gomez. Oh, whoops. They had a picture of Taylor Swift and. You're right, that would be way too epic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not really up to date. These people are all the same to me. Like, I can't we're, really tell the difference. We're, we're yeah, I mean, look at right 2.2 billion. Yeah. And that's just ticket sales. So think about merch. Yeah. I mean, Jesus. I, I My girl went. She spent like couple grand on a ticket and she went dude I, isaac's girl went and she said she there was people waiting the night before to get merch they right. could, she couldn't even buy merch because the line was so long they rented out a separate stadium for the merch <laughs> that's insane Jesus. that's what that's what she told me man bless bless her heart man i'm, yeah. I'm not mad at that well damn I think we're in good shape, brother. Yeah, man. It's nice to yeah, make a return you, to this van, bro. Yeah, it's yeah. always a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, yeah it's it fun. really is, man. I, I like I enjoyed talking hey, to you. Hey, and your girlfriend's very hot too. We didn't really get to follow up on that, but they, <laughs> they had her pulled up for like ten <laughs> minutes. They're, they're pulling up reels of her shaking her titties. I'm kind of like, I don't, don't want to be just staring at this. Right <laughs> I saw, dude. <laughs> I mean, well, like, you look at that. I'm talking about micro penises. Yeah. <laughs> I just kept looking over at Adam. He's just staring. Yeah. At the him. reason why. I was asking you those questions about like having your wife slept with another man. She did a scene with Brazzers before we met. Okay. So, and it hasn't come out yet. So mm. I'm just like, oh, I know the time is going to come where it's going to come out and I'm going to see it. Right. Or I'm going to try not to see it, but I don't know if like, <sighs> you know what I mean? I mean, I don't know if my advice is really like valuable to a person who, like, I feel like porn is all about like, steadily gradually make like making yourself numb to more and more extreme shit because for me at this point like it didn't really feel like the biggest thing in the world for my girl to do that scene but it still felt like a thing you know it's still like yeah. definitely a thing and for you as somebody who's like clearly going through this for the first time i would just say you got to take it upon yourself as a, a as a personal challenge to be able to like weather that storm and i think it gets easier over time because i mean and especially like you know she did it before you so it's kind of yeah, like yeah, yeah. you can't really be that bent out of shape no, about it, right? no i'm not i just I, I just know like so many people are gonna see it probably a bunch of my friends and all mm. that stuff so did you watch the porn yes are you gonna watch the porn 
I keep saying no, but I'm, I probably am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because if you don't watch it, then they can kind of use it against you. Like your friends and stuff can be like, well, when she did this, and then your brain's going to go crazy. Like, fuck, That's she did true. that. Like, But if you see it, then you'll kind of know what to be expecting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool, man. Well, dude, thank you, brother. Shout out Steve. Oh, yeah, man. Right Appreciate on, you dude. guys for real. Dude, thanks, dude. Much nice, love. Nice to see you. So, okay, how many times you jerked off in the past year? Uh, I went 144 <laughs> days. And then, and then after I started dating somebody, then it was all off the table. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Respectable. <laughs> I thought you were going to come out with that first. No, I forgot. Yeah. Stop recording. I'm going to have a date at 630 at night. So you have a ring? Uh, all right, cut. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Adam22 is my boy. And check out the podcast I recorded with him, too. Like uh, the story about how and why we had to reschedule is pretty interesting. I went ahead and admitted that it was my fault. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, what can I say, man? I love Adam22. I love you for sticking around to the very end of the Wild Ride podcast. And as I told you in the very beginning, I am on the road. I am on tour. It is the last times I will ever be performing the Bucket List show. And if you get a chance to be there, then jump on it. I'll see you guys on the road, and I love you tons. Yeah, dude.